Our movie starts with Marianne, a painter, teaching an art class in 18th century France. She directs her students as they make a portrait of her. While they paint, she notices a painting brought out by a student and is visibly affected by it. Her students ask her who painted it and what it's called. She says it was her, and it is called Portrait of a Lady on Fire. The movie cuts to years prior. Marianne is on a turbulent boat to a distant island in Brittany. Along the way, her luggage falls off, and she has to swim to get it. After a long trek from the shores in wet clothes, Marianne arrives at the manor, where she has been commissioned to paint a portrait of a young woman of the gentry named Helos, who is to be married off to a nobleman all the way in Milan, Italy. Marianne is introduced to her room by the maid, Annie, who leaves her to unpack and get dry. Marianne undresses and smokes while her canvases dry up by the fireplace. Later at night, Marianne heads downstairs for something to eat, and she helps herself to some food. Annie sees her and offers her some wine, which she accepts. She asks the maid about the young mistress. Annie tells her she was at a convent but was forced back to marry because her sister, who was due to marry, died. The maid tells her that other painters have come, but have been unsuccessful, at painting the young mistress. In the art room, Marianne stumbles on an incomplete painting of a young woman in a green dress. She notices that the face is unpainted. Marianne is informed by Helos' mother, the Countess, that she has previously refused to pose for portraits, as she does not want to be married. She tells her she must not know that she is being painted. She would refuse if she were aware. To Helois, Marianne is being hired as a companion to go on walks with the mistress, as she is not allowed to go on walks unsupervised. Marianne would use this ruse to memorize her features and draw her secretly. In the next scene, Marianne is painting when she is interrupted by the maid to tell her Helois is ready for her walk. She pulls Annie aside to inquire about the death of the sister, and Annie tells her how she jumped off a cliff while going on a walk on the island. Helois's mother is paranoid about her committing suicide too, and that's why she is not allowed to go on walks unsupervised. While they walk, Helois begins running towards the edge of the cliff, and Marianne chases after her. However, she stops before the edge, unexplained. Later, they watch the turbulent seas together. When they return, Marianne gives Helois a book she brought with her. As Marianne paints the next day, the maid interrupts her to tell her that Helois is ready for another walk. Helice tells her she would like to swim even though she doesn't know how to, and Marianne starts to draw her slowly when she's not looking. On their next walk, Helice opens up about her sister and the letters she left. One of the letters was an apology for leaving her with a betrothal. Helice asks Marianne when she will marry. Marianne answers that she may not get married at all, and Helice is jealous that she has a choice. The next afternoon, Helice comes to visit Marianne and asks for some tobacco, which Marianne gives to her. Marianne convinces Helois's mother to let her go out alone, as she doesn't seem suicidal, only angry. Helois decides she will use her free day to go to church to hear some music, but Marianne plays her some music on the piano instead. She plays a classic song called Summer. While she plays, Helois starts to notice some attraction to Marianne. When she returns from Mass, she tells Marianne that she missed her, to which Marianne does not respond. Maria then burns the unfinished painting she first saw when she moved in. Marianne finishes the portrait, but finds herself unable to betray Helos's trust and reveals her true reason for arriving. She tells her she has finished the painting and will be leaving later in the day, much to Marianne's dismay. After Helos criticizes the painting, which does not seem to portray her true nature, Marianne destroys the work. After seeing the destroyed work, Marianne explains her actions to the Countess by saying that she can create a better painting. The Countess is upset and is getting ready to fire Marianne, but Helof speaks up for Marianne and says that she will pose for Marianne for a better portrait. The Countess is shocked to hear this and gives Marianne five days to complete the new portrait while she is away on the mainland. Marianne then begins to repaint a cooperative Helois, who is only too happy to pose for Marianne. That night, Marianne was unable to sleep due to some cramps. She goes downstairs, where the maid reveals to her that she is pregnant and is waiting for the Countess to leave for the mainland before getting rid of the baby. The next day, after the Countess leaves, Marianne and Helois try to help Annie get rid of the baby with some hard running and some field herbs. Later, Marianne paints Helois as she sleeps. Helois then wakes up and stares at her. When she continues the painting later, Marianne complains that she can't make Helois smile. They both start to notice some tension between them. 
Later, they play some card games, and Halos constantly cheats, and the tension continues to build. The next day, while they continue the portrait, they talk about nude models. Helois asks Marianne if she paints them, and Marianne says she only paints nude women. Helois then asks what she says to nude women to put them at ease, and Marianne tells her, subtly flirting with her. One evening, they do a reading of the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. They debate the real reason why Orpheus turns around to look at his wife, even though the gods exclusively asked him not to, causing her to be returned to the underworld. Annie says that he is stupid for turning around, but Marion insists there may have been a good reason. Eloy suggests that Eurydice was the one who asked him to turn around, and Marion likes her interpretation. Later, both ladies and Annie go to see a gypsy, who tells the maid that she's still pregnant and to come back in two days. Marion says she'll go with her. Meanwhile, other women around the bonfire start to sing. While enjoying the performance, Marion turns to notice Haloy staring at her and holds her stare. Haloise walks away, but her dress catches some of the bonfire, which is the portrait referenced at the beginning of the movie. On their next walk, Haloise leads Marianne to a cave, where she kisses her. She then gets scared and goes back to the house. Marianne follows her and waits, but Haloise does not come down for dinner. Marianne starts seeing visions of Halos in a wedding dress, and she goes to find Haloise. Haloise says she has been thinking of Marianne, and they both get intimate later that night. The next morning, Annie reminds Marianne of her promise to follow her to the gypsy woman, and they both accompany the maid as she gets an abortion. Marianne tries to look away, but Helois forces her to look. When they get back, Marianne asks Helois to go to sleep so she can watch over a recovering Annie. Marianne wants to rest, but Helois wants her to paint the scene of the abortion. Annie agrees, and they both pose for Marianne. They spent the next day painting and lazing about. They both use a plant bought by Halois by a woman at the bonfire, which makes them high, and Marianne keeps seeing visions of Halois in a wedding dress. The painting was finished the very next day, and Halois says she likes this one better than the last, and Marianne agrees. Halois tells her she didn't destroy the last one for herself, but for herself. Marianne says she would like to destroy this one too, as by finishing the painting, she gives it to someone else. With their affair about to be cut short by the ensuing return of the Countess, Marianne starts to feel jealous over the coming marriage. She accuses Helois of not resisting the marriage enough, and Helois feels betrayed. She then asks if Marianne wants her to truly resist, and Marianne says no. Helois then leaves the painting room. Marianne goes downstairs and asks Annie about Helois. Annie says she hasn't seen her and has received word that the Countess is arriving the next day. Helois storms off to the seafront and Marion chases after her in regret. She apologizes, and they reconcile in tears. Later on, Marianne sketches a drawing of Halos to remember her by, and Halos says she'll have nothing to remember her by. She then asks Marianne to draw a nude sketch of herself on page 28 of her book, which she does. At night, Halos says she feels something new. Regret. Marianne asks her not to regret, but to remember instead. On waking up, Marianne finds the sailor downstairs, which means the Countess has come. The Countess sees the newly completed portrait, likes it, and gives Marianne a bonus. The Countess takes Helois downstairs, where she says she has a gift waiting for her. Marianne says goodbye to Annie, and when she goes downstairs, she sees Helois's gift, a wedding dress. Marianne says a brief farewell and leaves. As she is about to step out, she hears Helois say, turn around, a call back to the Orpheus and Eurydice story. She turns and sees Halos in her wedding dress, looking very much like her visions. In the present, Marianne looks through the portraits made by her students. She reveals that she saw Halos two more times. The first was in the form of a portrait at an art exhibition, in which Halos, with a child beside her, is portrayed holding a book and surreptitiously revealing the edge of page 28. The second time was at a concert in Milan, where she noticed Halos among the patrons, seated on the balcony, across the theater from her. Unobserved, Marianne watches as Halos is seen crying and smiling while listening to the orchestra playing a presto from Summer in Vivaldi's Four Seasons, the song that Marianne had played for her on the piano years before. And that's it for this movie recap. Do you think Marianne and Halos should have stuck together? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, we're sure you'll like this one even more. Click now to watch.